All right, well, let's go ahead and get started. Um, it's about five after right now, we'll get going. Um, I wanna welcome you all to our call today with Rio Rancho Public Schools. Um, we are um, privileged today to have uh, Beth Pendergrass with us today. She is the Chief Communication Strategy and Engagement Officer. So she has uh, quite a presentation, as you know, uh, we had this scheduled last week and um, the governor's announcements created some additional changes and adjustments. So, um, you know, uh, I have to commend the, uh, the staff, the leadership, the, uh, the entire um, school board on their continuing evolution into one thing after another. They have made so many adjustments into their traditional program that, um, you know, it's ever changing, keeps changing, keeps moving along, but uh, no matter what uh, has been thrown at them, they keep on evolving. So um, uh, it, they've been outstanding. So um, if you guys don't know me, my name is Gary Chalo. I'm the president and CEO of the Rio Rancho Chamber. Um, we are really excited um, to get school going again. I know your students are for sure. Um, but uh, from that standpoint, a couple things I want to mention today is, is if you do have any questions, you can put them in the chat section or you can save them to the end. We will go through some Q&A. We'll also give you some additional information on the community and some things that the chamber is working on to help support you and your students and the school district as uh, we, uh, we start building out the school year. So with that, I will turn it over to Beth. All yours, Beth, thank you. Thank you, Jerry, and thank you everyone for joining us this afternoon. <clears throat> I do wanna acknowledge that we do have one of our long standing board members with us, Catherine Cullen, is on this call this afternoon as well. And so I'd be remiss not to thank them. They are certainly in a position that they never thought they would be in as we work through this. And so um, I welcome her to step in at any point as well. Uh, I, I have to start by thanking our community and our family. We have, they have shown such patience and such grace as we have worked through this. As Jerry mentioned, there are multiple moving parts, constant changes and adjustments, um, and, and this is new for everyone. And, and so we appreciate everyone's understanding and, and help as we work through this. Next slide, please. So I'm going to take you through a high level overview of our plan. Uh, there are multiple pieces to it. Um, and if we were to go through the entire plan and every detail of it, we could be here um, into the evening. And so I'm really going to try and keep it at a high level. Uh, the whole plan is available on our website. Um, so I just wanna go through some parameters for our re-entry plan. Um, it's important that everyone knows that the public health orders are non-negotiable. We don't get to pick and choose uh, which public health orders we follow. That, that's not up to us. Um, we are funded by the state and therefore we need to follow those orders. Uh, in addition, um, the New Mexico Public Education Department has issued guidelines on how we might meet those public health orders. In addition, we don't have the latitude to ignore those orders. Um, right now, last week, you probably all heard the governor announce that we would all be starting the school year on red, which means virtual for all students until after Labor Day. Um, and with that, you know, when they asked us to create our plans, they really wanted us to have plans that we could flow between virtual, hybrid, eventually reopening and, and being able to move between those as cases go up and cases go down. And so we'll be starting the year in red and hopefully moving to hybrid after Labor Day. Um, and then all districts must have COVID-19 care, surveillance, tracing, and reporting procedures in place. That is 100% new to us. That is not something we've done. And so that's added uh, confusion to everything as well, but we're working on it. Next slide, please. So I'm going to take you through some of the, the pieces of the plan and we're going to kind of start with our teaching and learning. Um, this really kind of goes through which instructional models we're going to be using. Next slide please. So the start of school, all students are going to be starting virtually in August, August 7th for middle and high school students and August 11th for elementary students. 
Uh, students on the hybrid model will begin attending school after Labor Day. And per Governor Lujan Grisham, students will return in a phased approach, beginning with your K through five students. So on September uh, 8th, our K through th three students will start. And then also our group A students, and we'll get to this later, and then September 10th for our group B students. And then six through 12 students will return based on uh, the governor's announcements and when she allows the next phase to return. Next slide, please. So the options, uh, option one, we, we gave parents the option to select between a hybrid option and a fully virtual option. And so the hybrid option, K-3 students attend school Monday, Tuesday, Thursdays, and Friday. Fourth through 12 students are divided into two groups, group A and group B. Most likely these groups will be divided uh, alphabetically, but we would allow families with different last names to attend on the same schedule. Um, and, and there may be some adjustments to balance out numbers and we'll look at probably single students in order to do that. Uh, group A students would attend school on Monday and Tuesday and would be virtual for the remainder of the week. Group B students would be virtual beginning the week and then would attend school in person on Thursdays and Fridays. Um, K through eight students with disabilities will attend school Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. And then nine through 12 students will be on the similar to the hybrid model. And that's just based on the size of our high schools and being able to keep those social distancing guidelines. Um, and then Wednesdays, all buildings, no one will be allowed in the buildings. They're going to be deep cleaned on Wednesdays. Next slide, please. The second option was the 100% virtual option. Uh, so this allows students to go online 100%. Um, and families who have opted for this option, we ask that they uh, commit to it for a full trimester or full semester. Um, we have to be able to staff both these options. And so we need to know our numbers and be able to get the right amount of teachers in those classes and so we would just can't adjust those numbers as the school year goes on. Uh, elementary students will use the same district adopted instructional materials as our hybrid model um, and they'll have highly qualified RRPS teachers via Google Classroom. Our middle school students will be using Edgenuity. Edgenuity is a complete system which includes lessons, lectures, assessments, grading, and attendance. This is also supported by RRPS. Um, Edgenuity is also the same program we've used at our, hyper, our Cyber Academy for years and we've seen lots of success with it. So we're uh, pleased with that program. High school students, uh, just recently we've added, they get the option between Edgenuity or Google Classroom. Uh, we were hearing from a number of parents that they wanted to be able to take the electives that they had signed up for. And so we are offering those parents the option between Google Classroom and Edgenuity. So Google Classroom would allow them to take those uh, electives that they'd signed up for. Edgenuity does have electives available, just not the same as the school. And so we want parents to have both options and we're working with them. Um, we had a very short deadline, but that's also because we have to get our schedules going, registration, um, and if you can imagine having two large comprehensive high schools and all those classes and having to move kids around and determine which teachers are going to be virtual, which ones are going to be in the classroom, assigning students, uh, it's a very extensive process. And so we are going to be working overtime to get that completed for the start of school. Uh, students with disabilities may participate in this option. If they want to, they don't have to. We have those other options for our students with disabilities, but they may choose this option if they'd like. Um, and then registration, sorry, was completed last Friday at noon. Next slide, please. Information technology. So we, we've gotten a lot of questions about Chromebooks and internet access. Next slide. So we are providing Chromebooks for all our RPS students. So that every student will be a one-to-one -one district. We received a lot of questions in regards to why students would need to have our Chromebook if they have their own setup at home. Um, and so this is just some information to kind of help those understand. One, it's easier for the teacher to troubleshoot if all students are using the same 
device. Um, also, we have necessary programs and settings that we set up on the devices with the software that we use for the standardized test, etc. Um, if we go back to school, if we're able to return fully, uh, they would be able to bring this laptop back, the Chromebook, and take it back and forth where you really couldn't bring your personal one in. Um, because of standardization, uh, the technology department's better able to troubleshoot, replace, or repair equipment. Um, and we cannot support personal devices. Our technology department can't do that. And then in addition, and probably most important, is the Chromebooks have the filters in place to protect our students, and the teacher has the software to monitor activity. Um, also, we'll be setting up distribution days for Chromebooks for families. So each school will have three different days that they've set up where we'll be distributing those Chromebooks before the start of school. Next slide, please. Uh, connectivity, so internet services, there are some families that do not have access to internet. Um, thanks, I think I saw Jane on this call. I want to thank Jane. She has been an excellent partner for us to work with at Sparklight. Uh, she is working with us to provide connectivity to a lot of families in the Rio Rancho area that don't have it. And then in those areas where Sparklight uh, may not have connectivity, then we've been using T-Mobile to provide hotspots. So we're ready to provide service to around 1,200 families this year, more if we need to, but we, we are assuming it'll be close to 1,200. We provided service to 600 families during the spring. So this, uh, we're prepared to double that. And so um, our technology department has worked really hard to get this going. We have applications in place for families to complete, to request internet service. And then we're also working with organizations to help support needs. I know our information technology department has reached out to the city. There's some locations like the library that would have Wi-Fi access um, that families could use either in the parking lot or uh, socially distanced appropriately. And so we're working with different organizations as well. If we have collect a list um, where there's other opportunities for students and families to get online, we'll be putting that together. Next slide, please. So student and staff services, uh, this was an area kind of really related to transportation and um, daycare um, and so, and food service. So transportation, this is just really quick slide. Uh, for those who have questions on bus routes, we're working on those routes. Um, they've sent out a survey allowing families to opt out of transportation. There's a lot of families that don't feel comfortable putting their students on buses this year. Um, the allowed number of passengers for our buses has been reduced from 71 to 47. Um, however, they're still allowing two per seat, and I'm not quite sure where that's coming from, but that's made some families uncomfortable. And so uh, they're opting out of transportation. So we're trying to gather those numbers so we can build our routes and make sure that we keep those numbers down to that 47. We're not doing bus passes this year. And then this kind of goes through some information uh, for families as how you can find out more about your bus route. Next slide. So our transportation screening, our general ed students. So there was a lot of discussion and. <laughs> Catherine can shake her head yes, around transportation and it, whether or not we'd be able to take temperatures of students as they get on the bus. And this became really difficult to accomplish um, when you consider the multiple routes. And if a student has a temperature, what do you do with that student? And we talked about putting um, different bus attendants on the buses and having the bus attendant then stay with the student, but then you don't have a bus attendant for the next stop. Or So there was just a lot of issues surrounding that. And so uh, in this area, drivers are going to observe students as they board the bus. And this is something that drivers do anyways, they, they observe students. Um, and if a student appears to be ill or if they're coughing or if they have those symptoms related, then the front row of the bus is going to be reserved for these students. Um, they'll make sure they put a mask on the student and gloves or whatever else they need to do. They'll notify the school. And then when the bus arrives, the nurse will meet the student, take the student's temperature and determine whether or not that student needs to be put in our care room. 
and I'll talk about those later. Uh, students with disabilities, we have separate buses and we do have bus attendants on our buses with students with disabilities. These students are higher risk. And so we will be taking the temperatures of these students as they board the bus. And um, the bus attendants will wear face masks and face shields to protect themselves. If a student does have a temperature, uh, we will have them remain at home or with the care provider. Generally, the uh, students with disabilities buses, they don't have separate stops. They actually go to each house. And so they would be at the house. Uh, next slide, please. Other safety measures, um, they'll be all drivers and students will be required to wear masks on the bus and students will sanitize their hands when boarding the bus. Each bus will be disinfected between tiers and deep cleaned on Wednesdays. Windows and roof hatches will be open to maintain proper ventilation and then we'll maintain the proper social distancing and COVID safety practices at the bus depot. So even before our drivers are on the bus, they're not gathering, they're keeping their distance, they're um, wearing their masks and uh, having their temperatures checked as well. Next slide, please. Food service. So our curbside meals, we will start those on August 7th. So even though we're uh, virtually learning beginning August 7th, you'll be able to collect your curbside meals if those are needed. They'll offer one meal choice daily and they're always prepped cold for food safety when we do the curbside. Uh, Prepayment. So we're back to regular pricing for the meals. I know in the spring we did all free meals. We're now back to the regular pricing like you would see any other school year. Um, however, free and reduced lunches are paid for at this time. Um, we're not going to accept change to reduce contact. Uh, students don't need to be present to receive meals. And then we have the eight meal locations that will be set up beginning August 7th. Next slide, please. A uh, student ID or their number needs to be available at time of purchase. Uh, we're not going to do weekend meals. The curbside location at each school may change after Labor Day to adjust to parent, bus, and student traffic. And so food service is going to be providing curbside on those days when A group or B group isn't in session. So if A group is in school, they'll get their meals while at school, but B group may need meals and so they'll have the curbside available for the group that's not in school um, and they'll be working with the schools to pick the best location and time when it doesn't disrupt traffic and uh, such at the school. Uh, breakfast and lunch may be picked up at the same time and then like I said earlier there's no charge for the reduced price meals. Next slide please. The Cafeteria traffic flow, meal service, so our, you know, we'll have separate entrance and exit doors, the appropriate uh, signage, social distancing floor stickers and wall mounts to help guide students, the sneeze guards in place wherever possible, um, face masks and face shields except when eating. Uh, the applications are available online so that we're not collecting the paper applications. Again, the prepayments are encouraged. Uh, we're not going to give change. And then check and money orders are accepted. You can create an online account for parents. And then we're not going to do any a la carte items other than milk. Uh, next slide, please. So this kind of gives you an example. Our current seating students are generally facing each other. They're on the table there to the left. Uh, we would be removing half of those tables so that you have the students all facing in one direction and then they'd be properly distanced. So like, for example, where those X's are would be stickers where each student could sit. Um, and then at multiple locations, they can open up the cafeteria to the gym area and spread out even further to ensure that we're properly distancing. Next slide, please. This is just an example of the separate entrance and exit doors um, so that we are preventing the students uh, walking next to each other, getting too close. So we don't want that cross traffic. Next slide. And then the safely cashier cashiering students. So they'll line up six feet apart to receive their tray. The server will have a face mask, be behind the sneeze guard. 
Um, all the food items will be pre-portioned, including the condiments. All the cutlery will be wrapped and they'll include a napkin. There'll be no offering bars, so no salad bars, veggie or fruit bars. Um, there'll be water stations, or sorry, no water stations or napkin holders or condiment bars. Uh, so everything is pretty much going to be individually wrapped and packaged to ensure the safety. Next slide, please. Student and staff safety. So next slide. So our disinfecting procedures, essentially our custodial staff are going to be assigned to continually rotate throughout the day. Um, elementary, we have usually four on site, middle school five, and then high schools are larger and 16 on site. And so they'll be continually disinfecting between classes, passing periods. They're gonna focus on the high touch areas. Uh, the disinfectant spray bottles and microfiber cloths are going to be available to every teacher. And those will be cleaned daily. And then on Wednesdays, we're going to thoroughly disinfect every building. Next slide. Hand sanitizer will be provided at the main entry, at playgrounds, cafeterias, and along circulation routes. Uh, the school administration is designating traffic patterns with indicators on the floor. We'll have plexiglass barriers at the reception desk and the front entrances of the schools. The restrooms are going to be disinfected every hour. Um, our classroom furniture will have indicators for non-use. So a lot of the desks will be removed to ensure we're the six feet apart, or if it's a table, then they'll have separate places X'd out where kids can't sit. Uh, the drinking fountains, we're gonna disengage the paddles and instead they'll put the bottle fillers, uh, make sure that those function so students can refill their bottles, but they can't use the drinking fountains. Um, and then we're going to increase the air change rate on our HVAC systems to help with the ventilation. Plus we're going to do the building flush out three hours pre and post occupancy. So this ensures that we have the fresh air circulating through the building and helping improve that uh, ventilation. Next slide, please. Screening prior to students leaving home. So we know uh, in the past, um, Students have temperatures, parents send them to school, you know, they're, they're gonna be okay. We're going to ask that parents really monitor that this year. You know, if your student has a temperature or a cough, shortness of breath or any of those COVID symptoms, if they've been around someone who's had COVID or if they've traveled outside the state or country, uh, please, please, please keep your students home. Um, this is going to be important for the safety of all students. Uh, and also because if they come to school and they have that temperature, we're still going to have to place them in the care room. Um, and so it's just important that everyone's working together on this and we really need our parents support on this. Next slide, please. So at school screening, uh, we do have, we'll have signs posted at entry points advising students of the known symptoms. In addition to the requirements for entry into the building, um, if an older student has any of the symptoms, they'll at, be asked to go to the nurse and they'll report to the care room. In the elementary schools, staff will attempt to observe students to see if they're displaying any symptoms um, and they would send the student to the nurse if they saw any symptoms and that student could be placed in the care room. All employees and students will receive daily temperature checks upon arrival at school. So we've purchased some GoSafe tablets to place at every entrance. These are no touch. So a staff member doesn't need to um, get close to another staff member or student to take their temperature. The tablet takes the temperature and we're able to monitor that and, and see what that is. Um, if they have a temperature over 100, they'll be uh, taken to the care room. Next slide, please. All staff and students will be required to wear face masks and or shields. So it's up to our staff if they want to wear a mask or if they want to wear a shield or if they want to wear both. Uh, we will be providing those. Students uh, will be asked to wear a mask as a part of their required supply list. So students need to supply their masks. However, if they forget one, we will have masks on hand. Desks, like I mentioned before, will be spaced six feet apart. Uh, standardized signs that are age appropriate will be displayed throughout our locations, including 
hand sanitizing stations and it will show the proper hand washing, COVID-19 transmission mitigation. Um, we'll have traffic patterns. Again, placed throughout the building and then the specific exit and entry locations like we've been talking about. Next slide. This kind of just shows some of the classrooms spaced out. In addition, some of our schools have also identified outdoor spaces where they could move. A lot of our classrooms have uh, doors that lead outside. And so even during the day, they could have some students outside working in small groups, some students inside to help air with the ventilation and B to keep everyone um, separated. And so this just kind of shows some of those, what that would look like. Next slide. So our care rooms, uh, these will be comfortable classroom environments for students until their parent or guardian arrives. They'll be provided with the necessary PPE. All the desks will be spaced six feet apart. There'll be snacks and water. Um, they'll be able to use their Chromebooks. If they're in there during lunch, we'll be providing meals. And so we'll keep those rooms comfortable and we'll keep those students separated out. And it's really just kind of a holding place for them to be until a, a parent can come get them and take them home. Next slide. Recess, so elementary schools will reduce recess time to 15 minutes with approximately 20 minutes in between. Uh, most elementary schools have about five different areas where they can divide students to maintain the social distancing and keep those students in their pods or groups. Um, and then they'll use the hand sanitizer before and after recess. Next slide. Rapid response team. So every school has a rapid response team that includes an administration member, team leader, nurse, the nurse or one of the nursing staff, and then safety and security member. Um, and these, the, these teams will be put there and they'll be contacted if they need assistance anywhere in the building, if there's someone who needs to be taken to the care room. Um, also, when something happens, there'll be the team that will notify the district response team. Um, so for example, if we find out a student has been infected with COVID-19 or a staff member, then they're working with us to immediately start reviewing surveillance footage, contacting the Department of Health to activate their contact tracing efforts. Um, and a lot of people have asked, you know, what is your process for when a student or staff member uh, is diagnosed with COVID or we learn of that? That is really um, a process that we would do with the Department of Health. Once we become aware of that, we would contact them immediately and essentially they would walk us through those steps and uh, talking about where they were in the building, if a certain portion of the building needs to be shut down, if the whole building needs to be shut down or whatever that is, we would work with the Department of Health on that. And so uh, that's not our area of expertise. So we would listen to what they had to say. Next slide. Communication, um, of course, we're trying to communicate however we can to keep families, community members um, in the loop. We've had parent university classes, uh, what teaching and learning will look like, what 100% virtual will look like, COVID safety practices. These are uh, former classes we had, but they're still available on our website. You can watch them, they were filmed. And so feel free to pull those up. We have three that are upcoming tonight. We have transportation and food service. Tomorrow night, we are going to talk about homeschooling. We've received a lot of questions from the community um, and parents about, you know, I, I'm considering homeschooling. What do you think about that? And so this will kind of give parents an opportunity to see the difference between homeschooling and, and our RPS virtual learning and what some of those are um, and help them maybe provide them with information they need to make a decision. Of course, we want people to stay in the district and we feel like we have a good plan to meet the needs of our students, um, but we recognize that it's not our decision, this is a parent's decision. And so we'd just like to provide them with information. And then Thursday night, we are going to present our special services plan and or special education. Uh, and so there's a lot of questions from families in that area as well. We have a re-entry website um, with loads of information on it, an FAQ, um, and we're continually updating the information on that website. And so please feel free to visit the website. 
Also, if you haven't signed up for our community e-newsletter that's really focused on our re-entry, I invite you to do that. You can do that via the re-entry website. Um, and you can go online, sign up. And then all of our social media uh, outlets, we've been continually putting information on those. So we are doing our best to keep our public informed, uh, even as things continually change and update. Um, and there is so much information. And so, you know, we, we invite you to email us your questions. Uh, we do have a separate email set up just for reentry plans, and that is RRPS reentry plans at rrps.net. And so you may email us at that site at any time, and we are responding to those questions daily, hourly, every minute. Um, next slide. Business community. So I just wanted to give a few areas for our business community. Um, I just want to remind everyone that our administrators and teachers are working super hard to ensure that the instructional options provide the quality instruction our community has come to expect from Rio Rancho Public Schools. Um, in the spring, you know, we've heard some concerns from parents. They weren't pleased with what the spring looked like. It's important to know that uh, we had some restrictions during the spring that the PED gave us in regards to not wanting us to teach new content, um, wanting us to do the pass or fail grading, uh, and then only certain amount of hours each day. We, um, all of that has kind of gone to the wayside. And so we are expecting normal learning. Um, it's going to look a little different, but we are going to expect our students to be fully engaged. They're going to learn new materials. They're going to be tested and quizzed and um, so in the way of instruction we anticipate that we are going to make it as quality as we can. Uh, due to social distancing requirements there's a lot of questions around daycare for our families. Um, our SAFE program will be operating when we go back to school and it's available to students the days they're in school so K through three would be able to participate uh, the Monday, Tuesday, Thursdays, and Fridays, and then your groups A's and B's would participate on the days that they're in school. And we're also working really hard to find a way to assist those fourth and fifth graders on the days they're not in school. And so we haven't released that plan just yet, but we are working on some sort of plan for the students when they're not um, in school. And then we're also trying to work with our employees on providing daycare for them. Um, if we're going to expect them to be here teaching, they also are going to have some needs with their children. And so we're working on that plan as well. Um, for the community, we ask, you know, if there's anything the community do, can do to be, uh, to think creatively outside of the box at this time, you know, if you own a business, is there a space in your business that you could help provide space for your employees, kids? Is there, um, you know, our faith-based churches or anything like that that we could do that we can come up with as a community to help our families right now? We're asking that uh, please reach out to us. We're, we're happy to work with you. We're, it's just a really difficult time and schools were really struggling around the social distancing and being able to meet the needs of all of our families. And so it really feels like it should be a community effort and all of us working together. Um, Wi-Fi at your business. Um, if, if you have Wi-Fi and you think you're in a good location where, you know, students or people could even park in your parking lot if they needed to, to access the Wi-Fi, um, please let us know. And then uh, our IT department was looking at the possibility of businesses adopting families and providing hotspots to just specific families who might need it. Um, but there are a number of areas uh, that if you want to assist or if you're looking for ways to be a part of the solution, please reach out. We're happy to work with you and um, look at different options for our families. Next slide, please. And then again, uh, the email, our RPS reentry plans at rps.net. Please email us, um, or you can email me specifically, um, Bethany, B E T H A N Y dot Pendergrass at rps.net. So if you have ideas or um, suggestions, please reach out to me directly. I'm happy to 
respond to those. And so that, I know it was a ton of information um, and I know I went through it kind of quickly, but I wanted to make sure I got all those slides in there and didn't use up too much of everyone's time. So I stand for questions. So Beth, thank you for your presentation today. A ton of information and uh, as I kicked it off, Rio Rancho Public Schools has been trying to adapt and everything is very fluid, keeps moving and changing. And this just goes to uh, show what the district and the school board has done to really build a plan that is as comprehensive as it can be for uh, something that keeps on changing. So great job and thank you so much. So I'm gonna kick it off with a couple questions first and then I'm gonna, um, if someone has a question out there, please add it to the chat. Um, the uh, very first thing is, is NMAA, they moved sports back to, I think fall sports are now scheduled to kick off, I think November 4th through the governor's orders. Um, the, uh, so if it's safe to say then that if a student has, let's say they're in football or they're in basketball or they're in track where normally at the high school level, that's their last period of the day, the last class of the day. Um, they're not gonna be able to participate together until they're able to come into class together. Is that basically what's happening there as well? So the NMAA kind of has their own guidelines that are a little different from the school guidelines. Uh, we're continually getting updates from them. Um, right now, uh, you know, we went ahead and canceled all our summer activities and practices. Um, but as soon as that guidance comes out, we'll be sharing that. So. Yeah. Very good. And then another one that had come out uh, prior to this, and you can elaborate a little bit, is um, so those students that are they're taking their classes virtually, they have to. Uh, are the classes being recorded or are they live? Uh, so it depends. Edgenuity classes are more self-paced and self-directed, and so uh, not necessarily live. However, there would be pieces with the Rio Rancho Public Schools teacher that would be live interaction. The Google Classroom for the high school will be a little different. We plan to kind of set those up like periods, similar to the day. And so I imagine that each period there would be some live interaction with those teachers. So it depends okay. on which option um, families choose. Okay, and then associated with that, you had mentioned um, lunch times and picking up their food and the whole nine yards. Um, from that standpoint, if they are to do that, um, do, will they have sufficient time in between classes to go to Rio Rancho Middle School from home or Cleveland High School to pick it up? Can you elaborate a little bit on that? So those, the lunches are available for the students who aren't in school that day. So the ones in school will get them like a normal uh, school day, they'd go to the cafeteria and get their lunches and their breakfast and whatnot. The, the pickup would be available for the group that's not in school. So if those families need meals for that day, they can pick them up. Okay. Sounds good. So I'd like to open it up to for questions for Beth. Do you have any immediate questions out there? Please unmute yourself and welcome to ask a question. So while they're doing that, doing that. Um, one of the things here is, is also I saw my daughter goes to Rio Rancho High School. So they're gonna be rolling out the Chromebooks. I saw, um, I think on the 30th, 1st, and 2nd, or 31st, 30th, 1st, and 2nd, I think. So um, everybody that is going to be receiving a Chromebook, they will receive a email similar to that for their each of their schools. 
Correct. And in a lot of cases, it may not just be the Chromebook. It could also be instructional materials. It could be instruments. Um, it could be a number of things that the students will be picking up during that time. Okay. Very good. And then registration wise, how are they going to register? We're still working on that. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah, that's ever changing. So uh, a little bit different this year. Right. But do we have any questions out there? I saw Catherine Cullen pop on there here a second ago. Yeah, actually, um, so when you had that question about um, picking up the lunches and having enough time, because I got to me thinking is because now we're going to be adding for high school virtual Google Classroom. So we probably, in the, since they're going to be setting it up as class periods, we'll need to make sure that that kind of aligns with them to pick up those lunches now, since we're offering that as a new um, version just recently that we picked up. Absolutely. Very good. Okay. Yeah. Any questions? There was a lot of people that were asking them before. So um, matter of fact, here's a question here. Um, Rio Rancho Public Schools is purchasing protective cases to protect the Chromebooks while students are riding the buses. So um, is the Chromebook protected? Is it, uh, or is it just the Chromebook itself? Unfortunately, uh, you know, that was one of the, we have very limited budget. And as Ms. Colon can tell you, we are doing more with less and so that is one of those areas that we just were not able to um, add into the purchases this year for those covers for the Chromebooks. Okay. So hopefully uh, parents will have the ability to do that, um, to cover the Chromebooks. We'll, we'll look at, uh, see what we can do from the chamber level um, to see how we can do that. Um, one thing that the chamber is working on as well is uh, as you see here, we have a group called the Nonprofit Alliance. There's a number of nonprofits in Rio Rancho, Sandoval County, in the West Side, um, and one of those members is Boys and Girls Club Central New Mexico. So, Boys and Girls Club will be uh, providing um, their services when students are not in school, so they can go there. Um, they'll have uh, folks helping them out with. Um, classes, making sure that they're online. They have a hot spot, the whole nine yards to uh, make sure that the kids have the ability to learn while parents are. Um, our nonprofit alliance group is looking at uh, a number of different, um, uh, different things as well. And we are working with the Boys and Girls Club to extend the services that they offer beyond their limited capacity now. We're looking at uh, considerably increasing it. So I, I say that because if you, if you or someone you know needs uh, care services or normally your child would be at school, please reach out to us here at the chamber. Um, we are, uh, and reach out to the Boys and Girls Club. Boys and Girls Club has an outstanding program set up. They've been working hard at it. Um, so it's a great opportunity and we will be building off of that one and creating those site. In addition to that, uh, Sparklight on our website as well. Sparklight has a number of hot spots throughout the city. So we will be, um, please check with those hot spots. The chamber has a hot spot. We're at uh, Southern and 528. We have a hot spot there as well that uh, can be used for um, you need better, faster internet. I think it's gig speed, so uh, it's outstanding. We'll also be looking at um, the ability to um, host, as as Beth had mentioned, host um, families and students to um, have a hotspot area that they can uh, train at in our uh, lobby area, as well as our uh, boardroom. So um, that creates those up. Um, let me see what else is out there. Is the school district thinking about installing Wi-Fi on buses? Also, are you working with the city libraries to help provide services and Wi-Fi? 
So currently we're not looking at uh, Wi-Fi on buses, um, but the city library is definitely one of those areas that the IT department is working with on that. Yes. There's another question. Um, will there be marching band at, at high school level? So the fine arts department is working on the plan around the fine arts and so more information will come out on that. So with that, any additional questions? I think that's all I see. Anything we're missing, Amanda? Well, I, I have I have something, Jerry, just real quick, this is Dan Darnell. Bethany, first of all, I appreciate all this information. It's a, it was a great presentation, a lot of good information. Uh, what what's the budget uh for the for the covers for the chromebook what are you, what are you looking at you know what i would have to pull that number i'd be happy to email you though if i can get an email yeah sure if you can just go through jerry jerry can okay contact. perfect thank you. thank you questions out there uh, we had a couple comments Okay. Um, one of the comments was really impressed with how Rio Rancho Public Schools is trying to adapt and handle this. Thank you for all your hard work. And, Thank you. Al and also another one is Boys and Girls Club will be open for youth who are not in school for all day programs, but um, we'll be taking a limited number of youth due to space. Yeah. And uh, there's a contact in the chat for Boys and Girls Club and also Beth as well. Yes, definitely. Please reach out to the Boys and Girls Club. They, we are partnering with them. Uh, we've been working with the CEO of the Boys and Girls Club, Colby Wilson, on on different uh, on expanding their program to serve the community uh, in Rio Rancho. We also have a a number of facilities we're looking to expand to. So there is not too many out there that we can't uh, supply or, or take care of the kids during this time. When it comes to business in Rio Rancho and really New Mexico, we've got to be have the ability to get uh, parents back to work, given the ability to get the businesses open, the whole nine yards, get the economy going. Um, for those uh, parents that you know they have uh, they have kids that uh, you know obviously they can't leave their kids at home and go and go to work at the same time. Want to let you know that. The Chamber's working on that, Boys and Girls Club and the Nonprofit Alliance. So please reach out to us. We want to uh, um, fulfill all the students we can. We are working on programs. It's a very minimal cost program. In addition to that, um, we're looking at also is, is uh, for those of you that are on uh, free or reduced benefit, um, then uh, looking at making it even uh, no cost whenever possible. So um, a couple things about this presentation today. This is, uh, this presentation will be on our website, recorded as you're hearing it today. Um, and then any additional questions, um, you can, as, I, as Beth put on there, you can reach out to Beth, you can reach out to the chamber, and uh, we can go from there. So with that, um, I don't see any other questions right off the top. Amanda, do you see any more? Um, just another comment. Um, Thank you so much. This was so informative. Thank you to Rio Rancho Public Schools for working so hard to find ways to make it all work. So thank you, Beth. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. And thank you, Catherine, Board Member Colin. We appreciate your service. Sounds great. So I want to thank you guys for coming out again and uh, listening today. If anyone missed this presentation or you came in late or uh, you know someone that uh, would want to hear this presentation, should be posted onto our website uh, at rrrcc.org, three R's, two C's.org, uh, by tomorrow uh, morning, and uh, we'll have it all set to go. And uh, please use it, share it. We'll also have it posted on Facebook so that folks can see that it's on there as well for their information. As things continue to change, we'll also uh, gather that information from Beth and uh, the team at Rio Ranch Public Schools and add it to the site as well. So thank you all so much, Beth, Catherine, the entire Rio Ranch Public School team. And thank you to everyone for attending today. You all have a great day. Thank you.